My name is Rudolf Penner, and I do some artwork. I do oil painting, acrylic, watercolor, and ink and stuff like that. I've collected a few of my pictures here. Place is getting too full of pictures, I guess. <laughs> Art is a distraction from everyday life. And I think that's an important distraction because people get really serious about life and being serious about work. With real estate prices so high, uh, whatever they do has to ensure that they can pay high rents and pay high mortgages. So it's a good uh, release for people that might want to just take a break from all that. And um, I live in a co-op. When I was given this studio here, I was horrified that it was in the downtown east side. And it took me at least three years to get used to living in this neighborhood. The general public tends to be afraid of this area, but the locals definitely feel that they have repertoire with each other and that it is a, a community. I grew up very shy. I think my Outgoing nature was driven out of me by my family, and uh, I've always tried to overcome that somehow later in life. So it's taken a long time to get to the place where I can interact with people on a comfortable level. And art helped, and so did reading and uh, writing. So that's why I'm happy about some of these programs we had like the Downtown East Side Small Arts Grant with the Vancouver Foundation. And they give you a small amount of money to produce art. Uh, for many artists, it's enough to do a small project. And in the end, they like you to show that art somewhere. Right now, we have something at the Gallery Gache, and they've been good about supporting local artists developing your own voice for something you want to say that you thought was important. His self-healing is a person can start to self-heal through expression. I have an inspirational place down here in the downtown east side. Dr. Sun Yat-sen, classical Chinese garden. You can let your mind wander and you can just relax as long as there's not a tour going on at the time. And I used to do a bit of watercolor painting in there. And I just find it very interesting. Every month there is a different type of feeling in the garden. One, one month it'll be like jasmine flowers. One month there'll be like a turtle resting on a rock. And there's lotus blossoms there, real lotus blossoms. So if you're into magic, I find lotus blossoms quite magical because I did not expect to see them in Vancouver. My name is Vanessa Walterson and I do contemporary cedar hats. I call myself Canadian Cree Métis Cree. <laughs> coffee. I just need my two cups of coffee in the morning and start my day off right. I'm a cook. I uh, wanted to become a chef or a sous chef, so I went to culinary school. I just love cooking. Um, I think that's why I balance my life with cooking in the wintertime and then the art for the, the other two seasons because when I'm cooking, I'm around people, I'm around the restaurant, I'm around cooks and servers every day, and then I just get kind of like, okay, I'm going back to my art world, so then I, I have a good balance, if you think about it. These two contrasting lifestyles that I have keeps me well-connected and also well-focused. The artist's life can be lonely. If you're kind of having your moment where you need to just close the doors for like two weeks and produce three hats like I have done, it does make you think 
uh, how to make provisions because you can't just go to dress so and buy more more s supplies you have to think about that season ahead of time that was the main push this springtime it was to harvest enough cedar for the whole year and it was a really great workout you're looking for something that doesn't have many knots or branches sticking out of it just one good clean strip and uh, those are usually the tall skinny trees when I'm harvesting cedar from the tree, it's, it has this wonderful smell to it. And then as it's drying in my place, my whole place smells like cedar. I researched the history of hats. I researched Stetson hats, cowboy hats. Back in the 30s, every man wore a hat, didn't matter what socioeconomic status that he came from. Um, I had to study the history of fedora hats. It was originally a woman's hat until, you know, the gangsters started wearing them. And when people see you wearing a hat, they think of you differently. And when you wear a hat, you carry yourself differently. And the kind of hat that you're gonna wear says a lot about you. I'm inspired by Coco Chanel. She, uh, she's a lady that invented the black dress. And she was born an orphan and she um, started off with hats and then she went into fashion. I, uh, I like how she was always doing something different. She didn't just stick to one thing like hats and started off as, as, an, as a poor orphan and ended up as like a fashion icon leaving a greatest legacy like thanks to her. We don't have to wear corsets. We can wear clothes that are comfortable. We can wear suits like men. I'm very new to applying for grants. This is the first grant I've ever applied for. Some funding helps for the transition to grow when, when your art's in demand. Like for myself, if I wanted to do textiles, if I wanted to print on fabric, nice fabric to make nice clothes, those are great ideas. I know I could do it, I just don't have the funding for it. I think that's when grants make sense. And when people like it, you feel like you're just in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. It's just, it's just uplifting. Uh, my name is Eva Cho. Uh, uh, my Chinese name is Ngaoyang Yuhua. Since 我是初來加拿大時就是做Waiters 我在Carnegie 我們用了在不同的舞蹈、不同的服裝上 <laughs> Hi, I'm Kara Walker. I'm an artist living in the downtown east side. 
Uh, I work on a project called Little Crescent Leather with my two sisters, Hannah and Aaliyah. We make a variety of handmade goods, mostly focusing on beading and leather craft. And we'd heard about a grant through Vancouver Foundation. And so we decided, well, let's give this a go. And we thought, let's put a group together. And me and Hannah were interested in leather and let's maybe do a collaboration. And so that's how Little Crescent Leather started. Uh, my sister definitely has a bit more drive than I do. So when we get together, I find it inspiring and encouraging and I need a bit of that push. And if I just start beading and I'm coming up with a design on the go, I find my favorite designs come out that way. And the ones I think with the most personality. <laughs> I really like the physicality of my art um, and with beading it's lots of little movements <laughs> to create these kind of tiny intricate uh, designs and patterns and with leather there's a lot of little movements but there's a lot of big movements as well and I really enjoy kind of mixing both of those mediums. In the downtown east side as much as you see a lot of brokenness and uh, you know, people are hurting each other in this neighborhood. There is also so much vibrancy and so much relationship that goes on here. And art is one of the things that I have consistently seen throughout my entire childhood as something that brings people together. There's a part of me that wishes we lived in a world where uh, creating was just as important and influential as having a, you know, a full-time job. <laughs> When I'm in a place where I'm not as distracted, running all over, you know, working my three casual jobs <laughs> and looking after my brother, and I need to not be so obsessed and concerned with the day-to-day -day workings of the world. That's often when I'm the most creative. This is a clearly good thing in my life and isn't just something for me and myself, but is actually uh, a gift for other people as well. If I had a superpower, it would be to remove a restriction that people have w within themselves, that they're taught to be af quite afraid of other people, and so that they would more naturally talk to each other about things they care about and things they need. And I think it would help develop community better. <laughs>